Hola, hola. Depending on what time you're watching, buenos días, buenas tardes, o buenas noches. Thank you guys for tuning in once again to the Guyana Learning Channel. Soy la profesora Lorraine. Bienvenidos a la Escuelita de Español. As you may know, la familia is a common conversation topic when learning Spanish. Different languages and cultures use different titles for family members. And in this lesson, we will learn how the most common ones are written and pronounced. There is a lot of vocabulary about family members in both English and Spanish. But one of the most common ways to learn about it is through a family tree, which in Espanol is called árbol familiar. Repitan, se da. Árbol familiar. Árbol means tree. So there you go. You learned tree means árbol. One more for vocabulary list, right? When you talk about your family members in Spanish, you're going to hear yourself saying the words me or mis quite a lot. Both of these means my. Me is for singular and mis is for plurals. For now, let's meet Carlos and his family members. This is Carlos' family tree. As you can see, it is made up of his grandparents, his parents, his little sister, his aunt and uncle, and his cousins. Let's look at these individually and their relationship to each other. We'll start with his grandparents. In Spanish, to say grandfather, we say abuelo. Abuelo. Repita, abuelo. Do you have an abuelo? I'm sure you do. El abuelo means the grandfather. Can you guess how we say grandmother in Spanish? That's right. We say abuela. Abuela. To say grandmother. These are terms that could be used, but for a more affectionate way, you could say abuelito. Abuelito. To refer to your grandfather and abuelita to refer to your grandmother. Ahora repitan, abuelo, abuelito. Muy bien, abuela, abuelita. Excelente. However, in order to talk about them as one, we say abuelos which means grandparents. So we have abuelo for grandfather, abuela for grandmother, and abuelos for grandparents. Say abuelos. Very good. We'll now move on to the parents, which in Espanol are los padres. Repitan, padres. Padres means parents. Mis padres, my parents. Genial. On screen, you will see an image of el papá, which means the dad, and la mamá, which means the mom. Ahora repitan. Papá. Mamá. Now, papá y mamá are informal ways. Literally saying dad and mom. 
Now, if you want to say father, you say padre. Padre. And if you wish to say mother, you could say madre. So again, we have papa, padre. And for mom or mother, we have mama, madre. Very good. Both of them are los padres, but individually they are papa and mama to their children. Let's practice the vocabulary we've learned by repeating these simple sentences. So repitan conmigo. Repeat after me. Mi mamá fue al mercado. Mi mamá fue al mercado. Which means my mother went to the market. Mi mamá fue al mercado. Now, let's look at the dad. Mi papá fue al mercado. Mi papá fue al mercado. Which means my dad or my father went to the market. Now, if you wish to say that your parents went to the market, you say mis padres Remember, padres means parents. So repeat, mis padres fueron al mercado. Excelente. Los padres can also mean something to each other. For example, when a man and a woman marry, they now become husband and wife to each other, right? In Spanish, we say esposo, esposo, and esposa, esposa. So you could repeat these words. To say husband, we say esposo. And to say wife, we say esposa. Great. We will now fast forward this relationship to when they have children. To refer to children in general, you should say hijos. Hijos. Remember this word, it's spelled with an H. I, J, O and an S, but in Spanish, we do not pronounce the H. And for the J, it actually has an H sound in English. So that's why we say hijos, hijos. Now, if you wish to talk about a single child, you could say hijo to refer to the child as boy and hija to refer to the child when it's a girl. So let's go over this and you could repeat. To say children, you say hijos. Hijos. To say child as a boy child, you say hijo. Hijo. And if it's a girl child, you say hija, hija. Great work. Now, so in English, we use children to refer to your kids or someone else's children. We could also use the term children to refer to boys or girls playing, whether you know who they belong to or not. In Spanish, however, we do not use hijos when speaking about children that you do not know who they belong to. For example, 
If you wish to say, the children are playing, you do not say, los hijos están jugando. You say, los niños. So, children also means niños. Children also means niños. Let's move on. Los abuelos. That's the grandparents. Los abuelos. They use nieta. Nieta. Say that. Nieta. To refer to granddaughter. Nieta. And of course, nieto to refer to their grandson. So let's repeat those words. Nieta. That's granddaughter. And nieto, nieto for grandson. In plural, grandchildren would be nietos, nietos. Let's practice with some examples. Mi hijo, mi hijo juega con su hija. Repitan. Mi hijo juega con su hija. This means my son, remember mi hijo, hijo means son, my son plays with her daughter. Remember hija means daughter. Mi hijo Juega con su hija. My son plays with her daughter. In plural, mis hijos van a la fiesta. Mis hijos van a la fiesta. Can you say that word? Fiesta. Yes, it means party. Mis hijos van a la fiesta which means my children are going to the party. Now let's look at the sentence that includes the word nieto, which means grandson. Su nieto es muy alto. Su nieto es muy alto. Muy alto means very tall. Su nieto es muy alto means her grandson is very tall. Now, if I wish to say her granddaughter is very tall, I simply have to say su nieta es muy alta. Excellent. Now, for the relationship between siblings, we have Hermano, say hermano and hermana. Hermano is the brother and hermana is the sister. To speak of siblings in the plural, you simply say hermanos. You know, in English we say brother, we say sister, and both of them are siblings, okay? In Spanish, to say that word, siblings, we say hermanos, hermanos. Repitan, hermano, brother, hermana, sister. Together, they are hermanos, hermanos. Now, remember, we say hermanos when referring to only brothers or a mixture of brothers and sisters. However, if it's only girls, we say hermanas, hermanas, because that's the plural feminine form. Now, repeat these examples along with me. Tienes hermanos? 
¿Tienes hermanos? That's a question. It means, have you got any brothers? ¿Tienes hermanos y hermanas? Remember, hermanos means brothers and hermanas means sisters. And tienes means, have you got or do you have? So if I say or ask, ¿Tienes hermanos y hermanas? It means, have you got any brothers and sisters? ¿Tienes hermanos y hermanas? If the answer is yes, then you could answer by saying, Sí tengo. Sí tengo. Which means, yes, I have. Or I do have. If the answer is no, then simply say, no tengo. No tengo. So what's your answer? ¿Tienes hermanos y hermanas? If I ask you, ¿Tienes hermanos? That's a general question. It means, have you got any siblings? ¿Tienes hermanos? Again, if the answer is yes, you say, sí tengo. If the answer is no, then say, no tengo. I don't have. Repitan la pregunta. Repeat the question. ¿Tienes hermanos? ¿Tienes hermanos? ¿Sí o no? ¿Vienes de una familia grande? ¿Vienes de una familia grande? Grande means big. Do you come from a big family? ¿Vienes de una familia grande? ¿Sí? ¿No? Let's look at some possible answers. If you wish to say yes, you say sí, and you could describe the members of your family. For example, ¿Vienes de una familia grande? Sí, tengo cuatro hermanos y dos hermanas. Again, ¿vienes de una familia grande? Sí, tengo cuatro hermanos y dos hermanas. That's a lot of brothers, right? Now, if your answer is no, you do not come from a big family. You could use this as an example. No. Solo tengo un hermano. ¿Vienes de una familia grande? No. Solo tengo un hermano. I only have one brother. From what you've learned so far, try answering these questions with the correct family member in Spanish. Let's look at la pregunta número uno. Question number one. Who is the mother of my father? Who is the mother of my father? Remember, you have to answer in Spanish. Let's use the family tree to guide ourselves. Good. So, the mother of my father is mi abuela, my grandmother, right? Mi abuela. Excellent. Pregunta. Número dos. Question number two. Who is the son of my father? Who is the son of my father? That's right. Mi hermano. The son of my father is my brother. Mi hermano. 
Great. Pregunta número tres. Who is the husband of my mother? Who is the husband of my mother? Is it tío? No, no, no. Is it abuelo? No. Mi papá. Mi papá. My dad is the husband of my mother. Mi papá. You got all three? Los tres? I know you did. Muy, muy bien. Now, let me ask you this. What relation does your father or mother's sister have with you? What is she to you? Your aunt, right? Si. Sí. You refer to aunt by saying tía. Tía. And uncle by saying tío. Tío. So let's repeat aunt and uncle. So we say tía, tía for aunt and tío, tío for uncle. If you're talking about more than one uncle or aunt, simply say tíos, tíos. Again, if it's only aunts, then say tías, tías. As usual, we will practice our new vocabulary with some examples. Repitan. Say this with me. Mi tía es maestra. Mi tía es maestra, which means my aunt is a teacher. Mi tío es maestro. Mi tío es maestro, which means my uncle is a teacher. Now, if you wish to say my aunt and uncle are teachers, in Spanish, we have a word to say aunt and uncle together, which is tíos. Mis tíos son maestros. Now, if it is that you're speaking of only aunts, remember you have to say tías. But because we're talking about one aunt and an uncle, that's plural and it has a mixture of male and female, so we say tíos. Awesome. The following vocabulary refers to cousins and nephews, which in Spanish is super easy. For a male cousin, for a male cousin, that's a boy, we say primo. Primo. Say that. Mi primo. Mi primo. And for a female cousin, that's a girl cousin, we say prima. Prima. Do you have many primos and primas? And there you heard us say primos and primas. To make plural, you only need to add an S to primo to make it primos, which means cousins. Again, if you say primos, you are referring to only male cousin or a mixture of boy and girl cousins. However, if you say primas, you are referring to only female cousins. So you really can't get confused in Spanish if I say, Mi primo me visitará. Mi primo me visitará. Which means, my cousin will visit me. The reason you can't get confused is because the O 
at the end of primo indicates that it's a boy cousin. On the other hand, if I say in English, my cousin will visit me, do you know my cousin's gender based on this sentence? No, right? So if, for example, you'd like to know, you'd literally have to ask if it's a boy cousin or a girl cousin. Well, we don't have that in Spanish because we have a word for girl cousin and boy cousin. So let's go over those two words and you repeat it with me. So for boy cousin, we say primo. Primo. And for the girl cousin, we say prima. Prima. Great. Moving on. For niece and nephew, we use sobrina. Not Sabrina. Sobrina. Sobrina means niece. Repitan. Sobrina. And for nephew, instead of saying sobrina, you say sobrino. Sobrino. So we have sobrina, sobrina for niece, and sobrino for nephew. Again, to make plural, Simply add S, sobrinos. Let's look at an example. I wish to say, my nephews, that's plural, my nephews are good dancers. Remember, the plural for nephews is sobrinos. So to say, my nephews are good dancers, we say, Mis sobrinos son buenos bailarines. Mis sobrinos son buenos bailarines. If we group all our family members, we call them relatives, right? Yeah, relatives. In Spanish, we can call them familiares. It's like saying familia and you just add res, familiares, repitan, familiares, mis familiares, which means my relatives. You could use this term whether they belong to your immediate family or the extended family. You can practice with this sentence, tengo Remember, tengo means I have. Tengo muchos familiares en Guyana. Tengo muchos familiares en Guyana. I have a lot of relatives in Guyana. Excelente trabajo. Excellent work. I hope you were able to get something out of today's segment, whether to practice what you already knew or to learn about la familia. Remember that you can also get your family and friends involved. This way, they'll also learn and you will have more people with whom to practice with and improve your Spanish skills. Muchas gracias for tuning in to La Escuelita de Español on the Guyana Learning Channel. Soy la profesora Lorraine. Hasta luego.